Murphy has tied the Major League record. Holy cow, the kid has done it. There is no way a human being gets to that ball. He gets up. What a terrific young ball player Ken Griffey Jr. is. With his famous Spider-Man catch, his Hall of Fame swing, not to mention his epic appearance on The Simpsons, Ken Griffey Jr. was the hymn of baseball in his prime. He achieved feats that make me believe to this day that he was superhuman. This guy's core was as strong as anyone in the game, like a bow and arrow effect. But how good was the kid actually? I'm Ken Griffey Jr. That senior, he started all this. So y'all talk to him. The story of Ken Griffey Jr. began two years before he was born with the rise of Griffey Sr. At the time, Griffey Sr. was just making a name in high school as a prospect for football, seeing that he was a star wide receiver. It was later on he embraced baseball. As it turns out, Griffey Sr. was chosen by the Cincinnati Reds in the 1969 draft and signed with the organization. At the same time, his high school sweetheart was pregnant with his kid, the kid. After Griffey Sr.'s first minor league season, Ken Griffey Jr. was born. When did you know Ken Griffey Jr. was going to be special? Oh, he was in the locker room, and he, he was the biggest thief that we... He stole everything out of my locker. The early years of Griffey Jr.'s life collided with the early years of his father's career, so spending time in the clubhouse was inevitably part of Jr.'s daily routine. As young as he was, it was during this time of his life that he started nurturing his primal craving for sports and athletics. There wasn't anything he couldn't do. I went to the pool one day and he's doing these backflips and stuff and diving like he was the most natural kid. And the thing that I think about Kenny was that he didn't want to be it. He just wanted to play. Fast forward to his high school days at Archbishop Moeller High School in Cincinnati. Ken Griffey Jr. emerged as the U.S. High School Baseball Player of the Year in 1987. Do not let this early success story make you believe that he was actually good, because as good as he was, the kid had a secret kryptonite, and that was his very own father. And I go to the games and watch him in high school. It's, it's, I said, if he can't play in front of me, he won't be able to play in front of anybody. For five years, the kid couldn't hit a baseball if his dad was watching him play. What makes this story very interesting is the fact that Junior went from losing focus while his father was watching him play to making history as the first father-son duo to hit back-to-back -back home runs. But we're getting to that. This minor challenge that Griffey Jr. had does not negate the fact that he was an impressive prospect who was already receiving scholarship offers to play college football for programs such as Oklahoma and Michigan. More impressively, he was the number one overall pick by the Seattle Mariners during the 1987 Major League Baseball Draft, held on June 2nd, 1987. These feats he accomplished seemed like nothing compared to what his father had achieved. But the man the kid was turning into would soon take the world by surprise. Before every rise, there must be a fall. And for Ken Griffey Jr., it was a suicide attempt. In a 1992 Seattle Times interview, he revealed that he thought about killing himself a couple of times with his father's gun because he got depressed, angry, and lost the will to live. What began as mere thoughts soon prompted him to take action. And in January 1988, Griffey took 277 aspirin pills in an attempt to end his life. But at age 17, and everybody's coming at you. And that was it. And finally, I was like, you know what? I ain't taking this no more. Due to the aspirin he took, Ken Griffey Jr. ended up in the intensive care unit at Providence Hospital in Mount Erie, Ohio, a hospital that is now demolished and being redeveloped as a single family residential neighborhood. It happened. You know, from that point on, I was like, you know what? That wasn't worth it. A little more than a year later, Junior not only earned a spot on the Mariner team, but also started to establish the organization's reputation. In April 1989, just a year after his suicide attempt, he hit a line drive double in his very first MLB plate appearance. And one week later, in his first at-bat at the Kingdom, Griffey hit his first major league. Do I look back? Nah. I've always kept going this way. Three years down the line, he evolved into a positive example for children, transformed center field into a place of excellence and impressive defensive plays, and won a streak of Gold Glove awards. In 1990, Griffey Jr. began his decade-long era of superstardom in baseball, becoming one of the most iconic figures in America's favorite pastime. During that year, he delivered two remarkable defensive plays that showcased his exceptional skills. 
In the first play, he prevented Jesse Barfield from hitting a home run at Yankee Stadium. My ball into deep left center field. Griffey going back to the 1 8 track. Leaps high in the air. And he's got it. An incredible catch by the kid. He takes away a home run from Jesse Barfield climbing the wall in left center field in Death Valley here at Yankee Stadium. The second play was an astonishing over-the-shoulder catch with his back turned to home plate, leaving spectators in awe. This is truly phenomenal, a line drive, and he just goes and goes and catches it dead with his back to the infield. Watch this one. This is phenomenal. What a terrific young ball player Ken Griffey Jr. is. Ah. In a historic moment, Griffey Sr. joined the Mariners on August 21st, 1990, making them the first father-son duo to play in the major leagues during the same season. Having two Griffies on the same team caused a little bit of name confusion among the teammates. So to distinguish between them, teammates started calling Griffey Jr. the kid. And that name just kind of stuck after that. On August 31st, 1990, they made history again by becoming the first father and son duo to play in the same game. Griffey Sr. played left field while the kid played center. During this game, they both hit singles in the first- That's my dad, I'm like, so, but I learned how to actually hit watching him. Two weeks later, Another unforgettable moment occurred when Senior hit a home run and Junior followed suit, achieving back-to-back -back home runs, a unique feat in Major League history. A week after this historic event, Griffey Junior humorously stole a catch from his dad. Junior just kind of drifts over and just snatched it, just cool as could be. The father-son duo went on to play a total of 51 games together before Griffey Senior retired in June 1991. In 1991, the kid elevated his performance and achieved a milestone by reaching 100 RBIs for the first time in his career. He also set a new personal best with a batting average of 327. Additionally, he added another accolade to his collection, winning his first Silver Slugger Award to complement his second consecutive Gold Glove Award for outstanding defensive play. And in terms of MVP voting, he secured a ninth place finish. By the end of the 1992 season, the kid had already earned three Gold Glove Awards and had been selected to three All-Star Games. During the 1992 offseason, Griffey Jr. tied the knot with his sweetheart of three years, Melissa. Their love story continues strong, as they remain happily married to this day, with three children, two of which are athletes as well. In the 1993 MLB Home Run Derby at Oriole Park in Baltimore, Griffey achieved yet another remarkable feat by hitting the warehouse beyond the right field wall with a fly ball. In 1994, Griffey had a stellar year, hitting 30 home runs in the Mariners' first 65 games and recording four multi-home run games, despite the season being cut short due to a labor dispute in August. In that same August, he was able to boast of not 30, but 40 home runs, putting him in the lead of the American League. In 1995, with Griffey Jr. on the team, the Seattle Mariners had a chance to make it to the postseason, something they never did in 21 years. Unfortunately, Jr. and the Mariners faced a setback when he made a spectacular catch, but shattered his wrist in the process. He missed the next 73 games, while doctors inserted a metal plate and seven screws in his wrist. Despite playing only 72 games that season, Griffey Jr. had one of his best defensive seasons, earning a spot on the All-Star team and winning his sixth gold glove. In a historic moment, the Mariners narrowly edged out the California Angels to claim the West Division title for the first time in franchise history. This series in 1995 sparked a short-lived rivalry between the Yankees and the Mariners. Griffey's reluctance to play for the Yankees stemmed from how they had reportedly mistreated him and his father. I came up to visit my dad and it was just me and him and got to the ballpark early. I'm sitting in a dugout. The security guard comes over and says, hey, George doesn't want anybody in the dugout. My dad was like, what? He, my son. So he goes, all right, hey, go in my locker. He goes, but before you go, look at third base. It's Craig Nettles' son taking ground balls at third base. In 1997, Griffey led the Mariners to victory in the AL West and secured the American League Most Valuable Player Award. He had an outstanding season, batting 304, hitting 56 home runs, and driving in 147 runs during 157 games. 
The following year, 1998, gained significant media attention as both Griffey and Mark McGuire raced ahead of Roger Maris' home run record of 61. He had a remarkable season with a 285 average, 56 home runs, and 146 runs batted in during 161 games. In 1999, he was ranked 93rd on the Sporting News' list of the 100 greatest baseball players. Remarkably, at age 29, he was the youngest player on the list. During his time with the Seattle Mariners, Griffey accomplished numerous accolades, including 10 American League Gold Glove Awards, the 1992 All-Star Game MVP, the 1997 AL MVP, the 1998 SB Co-Win for Male Athlete of the Year, the 1999 Players' Choice Awards Player of the Decade, and a place on the All-Century Team in 1999. In November 1999, the Mariners offered Griffey an eight-year contract, reportedly valued at $140 million. But he declined this offer and instead requested a trade to a team closer to his hometown of Orlando, Florida. Then he narrowed down his preferred destination to just one team, the Cincinnati Reds the same team where his father had earned three All-Star selections and won two World Series. So on February 10, 2000, Griffey Jr. was traded to the Reds, where he signed a nine-year, $112.5 million contract. In his first season with the Reds, the kid made history by becoming the youngest player to reach 400 career home runs. He also earned a spot in the All-Star team for the 11th consecutive season and achieved the 40 home run milestone for the seventh and final time in his MLB career. However, starting in 2001, Griffey's career was marred by a series of injuries over the next three seasons, during which he only played 234 games. In 2005, Griffey bounced back from his injuries. He played in 128 games, batted 300 for the first time since 1997, and reached the 30 home run mark for the first time since 2000. He also had an impressive 144 OPS plus, reminiscent of his prime years. Griffey received MVP votes as a ref for the first time and won the National League Comeback Player of the Year Award. In 2006, he participated in the World Baseball Classic, excelling as part of Team USA. In six games, he batted an astounding 524 with three home runs and 10 RBIs. On June 9, 2008, Griffey reached the 600 home run milestone. Later that season, he was traded to the Chicago White Sox, where he made a spectacular defensive play in a crucial Game 163 against the Twins. In the same year, he finally returned to postseason baseball, but the White Sox were eliminated by the Rays in a disappointing series. After his age 38 season, he became a free agent for the first time in his career. While Mariners fans felt bitter toward Griffey for not accepting their $140 million contract in 1999, all was forgiven when he finally returned to Seattle. Hearing the deafening cheers of 46,000 fans at each game deeply moved Junior. He expressed his gratitude, saying, I believe it's my duty to retire as a Mariner for both myself and the people of Seattle. True to his word, he re-signed with Seattle in 2009. That season, he hit 19 home runs with a 735 OPS and helped lift the Mariners to 85 wins. He was so revered after that final game, his teammates carried him off the field. In his last year, Griffey's career had a poetic ending, with his final hit being a walk-off sink. At the time of his retirement, Griffey was fifth on the all-time home run list with 630 home runs. He had achieved numerous accolades, including home run derby titles, all-star selections, gold gloves, silver sluggers, and an MVP award. With fewer injuries, he could have surpassed 3,000 hits and potentially topped the all-time home run leaderboard, making his Hall of Fame induction all but certain. On January 6, 2016, Ken Griffey Jr. was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame with an astonishing 99.32% of the vote, shattering the previous record set by Tom Seaver in 1992, who received 98.84% of the vote. Nowadays, Griffey Jr. focuses more on being a family man, a pilot who owns the jet he flies, an icon, a mentor, a coach, and maybe a comedian. 
So how good is Ken Griffey Jr. actually? I'd say Griffey Jr. is not the kid. He's the GOAT of baseball. And looking back on your career, Ken Griffey Jr., what do you think will be remembered for far above all else? Smile. I couldn't agree more. Subscribe for more.